All right, we got this Raw show to talk about here. And in fact, this week we actually got new matches for WrestleMania. As expected, it is going to be Sami Zayn and Gunther for mm-hmm. the Intercontinental title. Sami Zayn won the gauntlet match. And so he'll be facing Gunther for the title in a singles match. I thought Sami Zayn did a great job tonight. Yeah. Really great job as far as just everything, all the way, you know, wrestling wise. And we're going to have a uh, five team ladder match. Six team. Six team, team ladder match. Six team ladder match. And, uh, well, five teams will be facing the Judgment Day in a ladder match. And they're having a. Uh, It'll be three teams on that will be finalized next Monday from Raw. And then I don't know if it's this. Probably probably two teams Friday on SmackDown. And the Raw, let me just see the the Raw matches um, are, where do I have them? Um, it's um, New Day against... Uh, oh, you're Otis. talking about this coming I, Monday? This coming Monday. Okay, it's so R-Truth and Miz versus Indu Share. Right. It is uh, DIY versus the Creeds, which where have they been? They dropped off Creed's, the face of Creed, the earth. Creed's have been on uh, main event. And, and, and the New, New Day New... versus Alpha Academy, Otis and Akir Tozawa. Otis and Tozawa, right. So that's those are the three matches. So, so those three winners, which would probably be New Day. Um, I don't know who would win between the Creed's and Gargano and Ciampa. And be, being that it's a ladder, uh, they may go with Gargano and Ciampa, given it's a ladder match. And then Miz and R-Truth, almost for sure because Miz and R-Truth are feuding with Judgment Day. So those are probably, so now we probably, those are four of the six teams, and the other two are going to be um, announced, you know, or they're going to have matches on SmackDown probably this coming Friday. All right, well, the show opened up with a, uh, a long segment, as they often do. And uh, where's my notes here? Hold on one moment. I went the wrong way. All right, uh, the show. Where are my raw notes? I don't know. I can't tell you, but uh, it opened with Travis Scott coming to the building for whatever reason. There we go. Well, actually, Drew came out, and he uh, he was very angry, and he basically said, you know, Seth is a a hypocritical junkie. He said that uh, the big picture here is the Rock. This business started in the carnivals, then the smoky buildings, and now the sold-out well, arenas. And well, the next some... step is working with one of the most powerful men on earth, The Rock. You know, it's funny. Is like, uh, I don't know. It's all arena, all arenas were smoky. Yes. You know what I mean? Madison Square well, Garden have, was we smoky. We have worked our way out of them, in fact. Yeah, it's smoking loss. He said, but I mean, Rock... I, I, I mean, when I was a kid, they were smoky arenas. But this had nothing to do with the change in wrestling fans. It had everything to do with the fact that you're not allowed to smoke in arenas anymore. He said Rock was upset with Cody. That had nothing to do with Seth or himself. And Seth needed to just let it go. And Seth came out and gets in the ring and he goes, you know, I got you got my attention with that Claymore last week. So how about you get more of my attention? Why don't you hit me with another Claymore? And I was like, why are you let, why why are you allowing him to hit you with the claymore? Then he gets on his knees, he puts his hands behind his back. He's like, "Come on, hit me with the claymore!" And like the crowd's all confused, and I'm all confused. Like, what are you doing, dude? And so Drew says, "Listen, I just want to talk to you. Just listen for once." He says, "A while ago, you told me get over the bloodline, get over it, and you were right. And I got over the bloodline. I got focused." And here I am going for a championship match at Mania. But now you need to take your own advice and just get over the bloodline. And so Seth does this promo, and he he talks about how you remind me of CM Punk, who was the biggest hypocrite I ever met until I met you. You cried about the bloodline for years, but now look at this. You beat Cody, bloodline helped. You beat Jey Uso, bloodline helped. I think you want to be a member of the bloodline. And so Drew says, I know what you're trying to do. You want me to put you out of your misery, but I'm not going to. I'm going to leave, and there's nothing you can say to provoke me. And so he goes to leave, and Seth says, one more thing. You know, I'm not paying any attention to you on the road to Mania because of all the threats I have going into this show, the bloodline, Roman, Rock, my back, my bad knee, at the bottom of my list, the thing I'm worried about the least 
is Drew McIntyre. That builds up the match well. And Drew acts like he's going to leave, but then he turns and, and he just walks out. And I was like, what in the hell was this segment right here? Why is Seth begging to get claymore with his hands behind his back? Why is Seth saying, well, I, I, mean, I don't thing, worry about you at all? The, the, the whole the whole thing the whole thing is, is like uh, he's trying to make Drew lose his cool um, to get the mind game advantage. So he beats his ass? He didn't beat his ass. He didn't do it. He didn't fall for the gig. I don't, I mean, in the end. Falling for the gig would have been Drew beating his ass. Yeah, well, maybe Drew gets hurt doing it. I don't know. Nice. But the thing, the thing, you know, well, I mean, the idea is, is that he loses his cool and, and Drew's trying to not lose his cool. But the, um, you know, the thing is, is though, like, he, he did totally downgrade the match. Like, the tag match is like a big deal. And he downgraded his own match because he said it's the least important thing that he's, yeah. that, that he's dealing with is his match on the second day of WrestleMania. He actually came off as a heel. And Drew came off as a baby face because everything he said was the truth. Like, how about you forget that shit and concentrate on our match? We got a big match here. So it's yeah. like, nah, it ain't much. I'm not worried about it. Yeah. Kick me while you're at it. Yeah, I didn't like this segment all that much. Then we had uh, Chad Gable. Actually, everybody throughout the show did a, uh, a promo building up the gauntlet match. I thought they were all very well done. Made the match seem like a really big deal. They really did. They, you, you know, the, the a lot of the stuff that they've been doing, you know, um, between, you know, video packages and the sports feel and the entrances and things, you know, I mean, people, come. I, I think they've really made the show look, um, the show just looks a lot better. I mean, it really does. Uh, Lee Fitting was a, a great addition. And uh, Kevin Dunn, for all those years, I mean, it really is something that all those years people used to complain about Kevin Dunn and Vince McMahon. And when both are gone, it has improved so much. Yeah, it's almost like people were right. It's almost like people were right, yes. While during this entire time, everyone in the company would swear, you guys don't know what you're talking about. And it turns out that maybe we did. Yeah. 